Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen and a worksheet that you can download in the link below. In your books I'd like to get down today's title which is The Movement of Substances. And for your Star Trek activity I would like you to recall what this organelle in this animal cell is. I want you to recall its function and to suggest what foods that you eat have the most energy. And I'd also like to think how that might relate to today's lesson. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through some of these answers together. Did you get that finished? This organelle is called the mitochondria and it is the site of aerobic respiration. When you've been suggesting what foods give you the most energy I hope your suggestions include foods with a lot of sugar content. But how is that going to relate to today's lesson? Let's find out. In today's lesson, we're going to describe how particles move by diffusion. We're going to describe the movement of substances into and out of an animal cell. And we're going to describe the movement of substances into and out of a plant cell. First, let's talk about this process called diffusion. If I had an aerosol can and I sprayed it at the front of the classroom, which students would be able to smell it first? And which students would smell it last? It makes sense to say that the people who are closest to me are going to smell it first and the people who are furthest away from me are going to smell it last. But how do the particles which I've just sprayed up into the air travel from one part of the classroom to the other part of the classroom? Let's say that this box represents the classroom and when I spray the aerosol, the concentration of those aerosol particles are highest at the front of the room where I sprayed it. Looking at the other side of the box, you can see that the concentration of the aerosol particles is the lowest at the back of the room and this diffusion is the movement of these particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration or from the front of the room to the back of the room and it moves down something called the concentration gradient. This is the difference in the concentration between the area of the highest concentration and the area of the lowest concentration. Now even when the concentration of these particles is the same across the entire room these particles are always moving. So using this knowledge of diffusion, I want us to have a go at this task. It is sports day and the teachers have put on a surprise barbecue for our students. Here you can see the barbecue and there you can see four students. There is no wind on this particular day. I want to know which of these students will smell the barbecue first, who will smell it second, third and fourth. Now this is an explain question. So you've got to give the order of the students and you've got to give the reason why. And remember to talk about where the concentration of particles is the highest and where the concentration of particles is the lowest. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. So let's have a look at how to answer this question. Firstly, the student to smell it first is going to be Joe and then it's going to be Garrett and then it's going to be Connor and then Cannon. Now we're going to establish the concentration gradient. The concentration of particles at the barbecue is high. The concentration of particles near Cannon is low. And now that we've established where the concentration of particles is high and where the concentration of particles is low, we can then start talking about our diffusion. Particles will move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration down its concentration gradient. This is called diffusion. So now we can describe how particles move by diffusion. Let's talk a little bit more about this diffusion and how it can be affected by its concentration gradient. If I asked you which one of these balls is going to get to the bottom of their hills first, you would say this one because it has the steepest gradient. The highest gradient will result in the quickest moving ball. The same thing is true when we're talking about diffusion and its concentration gradient. We've got this particle set A which has got the lowest concentration of particles down to particle set C which has got the highest concentration of particles and B which is in between. This means that A has the smallest difference between the concentration of particles at the front of the room and at the back of the room and C has the largest difference in the concentration of particles at the front of the room compared to the back of the room. What I'd like you to do is to predict which set of particles either A, B or C is going to diffuse the fastest and I'd like you to refer to the concentration gradient in your answer. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answer together. Did you make that prediction? 
Let's have a look at what happens when we let these particles diffuse. C diffused the fastest and A diffused the slowest. That's because C had the largest concentration gradient and A had the smallest concentration gradient. So the higher the concentration gradient, the faster the rate of diffusion. So now we have improved our description of how particles move by diffusion. So now we're going to look at some of the substances that our animal cell requires and how diffusion can help get those substances into the cell. At the beginning of the lesson we said that this was our mitochondria and it was the site of aerobic respiration, a process which provides the cell with energy. This aerobic respiration requires two things, glucose and oxygen. But where do we get these reactants from? Glucose can be obtained in the diet by eating sugars or by the breakdown of carbohydrates. And oxygen we get from the atmosphere when we breathe in. This glucose has to enter the blood through the small intestine by a process called diffusion. And this oxygen has to enter the lung and then is transported from the lung into the red blood cells by diffusion. When glucose and oxygen arrives at the cell, then glucose and oxygen are going to diffuse into the cell. But when these reactants, oxygen and glucose, are used for this process respiration, it produces waste products, carbon dioxide and water. We can't let these build up in the cell, so these waste products need to be got rid of. And the cell is going to get rid of these products by transporting them out of the cell into the blood by diffusion. What I'd like you to do for your next task is to take these seven statements, which can be found on the worksheet, and arrange them in order. If you haven't got a worksheet, don't worry about it. You can copy out the statements and then label them one through seven. But to make sure we're all starting with the same statement, we should begin here. There is a high concentration of oxygen and glucose in the blood. Carbon dioxide and water enter the blood by diffusion. And if you really want to challenge, I would like to suggest the events that occur after this seventh statement. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. So let's have a look at the order of these statements, starting with there is a high concentration of oxygen and glucose in the blood. Now that we've established where the high concentration is, the next thing we should do in our answer is to establish where there's a low concentration. There is a low concentration of oxygen and glucose in the body cells. Now that we've established a high concentration and a low concentration, we've got a concentration gradient. So we can say that the glucose and the oxygen will enter the body cells by diffusion. In the cell, aerobic respiration is going to occur and that glucose and oxygen are going to react to form carbon dioxide and water. As a result of this, the concentration of the water and the carbon dioxide is going to be high in the body cells. Now we've established we've got a high concentration of this water and carbon dioxide, which means we're going to have to form this concentration gradient by establishing where there's a low concentration. There is a low concentration of water and carbon dioxide in the blood. And then the seventh statement we already had, carbon dioxide and water enter the blood by diffusion. Did you have a go at suggesting what happens after this seventh statement? Well now we've got a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood. And now that we've said where we've got a high concentration, we need to establish where we've got a low concentration. There is a low concentration of carbon dioxide in the lungs. That means that carbon dioxide is going to enter the lungs by diffusion so that you can breathe it out. And at the same time this happens, oxygen is going to diffuse from the lung back into the red blood cells. But what do you think happens to all the water we're producing by aerobic respiration? If you've got any good suggestions, I'd like to hear about them down in the comments below. So now we can describe the movement of substances into and out of an animal cell. We also related this to the function of one of our organelles, the mitochondria, and this is going to prepare us for when we do the aerobic respiration topic. So now let's look at the movement of these substances in plants. When you water a plant, there is a lot of water in the soil. This water is going to move from an area of high concentration in the soil to an area of low concentration into the plant cell, down its concentration gradient. So our water moves from the soil into the root hair cell. Because all the water has been transported into this root hair cell, there is now a high concentration of water in this root hair cell. But there's a low concentration of water in the cell next to it. That means that our water is going to move from our root hair cell to the cell next to it. But because the water is being removed from this root hair cell, it's going to be lowering the water concentration, which allows more water to enter the root hair cell by diffusion. 
and then that water is going to be moved from the root hair cell to the adjacent cell which is going to lower the concentration of water in the root hair cell and it's going to establish that concentration gradient again and our water will move from a high concentration to a low concentration down its concentration gradient and this process repeats until the water has gone through all the cells and reaches the stem which brings us on to our next task I would like you to sketch this diagram and explain how water is transported from the soil to the stem. I would also like to sketch this diagram of our animal cell and label the substances that are entering the cell and exiting the cell. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? So starting with this. First, let's establish our concentration gradient. There is a high concentration of water outside the cell. There is a low concentration of water inside the cell. So that water is going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration down its concentration gradient by diffusion. But we're not quite at the stem yet. So once the water has entered this cell, there is a high concentration of water inside the cell. Let's establish our concentration gradient. There is a low concentration of water inside the stem. Water moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration down its concentration gradient by diffusion. Let's have a look at our second question. The substances which are diffusing into the cell are oxygen and glucose. The substances which are diffusing out of the cell are carbon dioxide and water. So now we have described the movement of substances into and out of a plant cell. Which means there's only one more thing to do before we wrap this lesson up and you get to choose which task to complete. You can either write a tweet, 140 characters long, and you can hashtag those keywords. You can write down two correct statements and one incorrect statement about today's lesson. Or you can draw the most important thing that you learned today. I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.